I was just talking to my guys during the break. The FBI has reissued a report they put out seven years ago saying cell phones, farmer, farmer's almanac, maps are all signs you're a terrorist. Go ahead and the police pull you over. Go ahead and put you in a terror database for life. No firearms, no liberty, no due process. I mean, Mike Adams, is that not the ultimate tyranny where they just put you on secret list for no reason? And what, two years ago, uh, one of the head federal marshals in Denver went public and said, we have a quota of innocent people to put on terror list for life. Uh, and, 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 and they put a million two hundred thousand Americans on it. We know of since a year ago when they made the list secret. Yeah, this is this is one of the, the processes of tyranny is putting people on these secret lists outside of the normal process of, uh, of law, right, uh, of due process. I mean, this is the way to circumvent the Constitution, and they are really clever at this. They're really good at this, and I think it's going to get a lot worse, Alex, before it gets better. We, something has to, to, to happen here. The American people have got to, to rally again and to stand up for their freedoms and their rights and to protect the U.S. Constitution, which I thought was a valid document. You know, when I was growing up in school and I was being taught American history, gee, I thought that thing still applied. <laughs> Only as an adult do you learn that uh, it's been circumvented. Well, I don't think people realize the process of tyranny. Once an elite decides to be ruthless and go all the way, and they believe human life is not just a cheap but a negative, once they make that decision, the sky is the limit. And it's now the sky is the limit. We're going to keep you another 20 minutes and take calls. We appreciate you joining us. Talk to Chris, Tanya, Marianne, D, Bob, and others. But it sounded like when I mentioned the concerted attacks that are clearly funded against anybody exposing the corruption, Ron Paul isn't making people take flu shots. Ron Paul isn't raising people's taxes. You're not making people take flu shots. You're not sending SWAT teams to people's homes. But all this alternative media attacks anybody who's real. I notice we all get attacked by these concerted operations, mainstream and alternative. And as much as I'd like to believe it's just jealous people, more and more it's being proven it's government. And that's their counter is to try to throw up such a screen of arguing and fighting and infighting that nobody can ever get together. And I think when you see somebody being attacked and lied about, that's the seal that they're good and can be trusted. Well, there's no question. We, we've been subjected to attacks that were organized and funded by, we think, pharmaceutical companies or, or their front companies. And this has just been going on for years. We, you know, we, we hardly even really talk about it anymore. It's just a routine part of being a publisher of, of true information. I mean, you know, the only way to not be harassed in our, our system today is to lie on behalf of the corporation. If you, if you go out and you say, nice, happy things about the drug companies and about the oil companies and about all the politicians who are lying to us and spending us into you know, complete bankruptcy, if you say happy things about those people, you'll be left alone. You won't be harassed by anybody. It's only when you go out and start asking questions, like, like what Ron Paul does every single day. You know, Ron Paul is being attacked precisely because he is effective, and that's the same reason that you and I are being attacked, Alex. Well, and also, it's a military tactic. Whenever they deny they're trying to forcibly inoculate nurses, and they are, or they lie and say there's no plan to get rid of the dollar as they openly have debates about doing it, it's a denial so that we just debate whether it exists or not instead of having a real debate about whether we want it or not or if it's legal or lawful. And it's the same thing by making it about Alex Jones being bad or Ron Paul being bad or Mike Adams being bad or Dr. Stan Monteith being bad. Then even our defenders spend their time defending us instead of going out and warning new people. So that's why I always tell my listeners, don't defend me. Go out and reach new people and warn them about fluoride in the water. Warn them about GMO food. Warn them about vaccines. Warn them about the attack on Iran and lying about uh, their processing centers for uranium and how that's a hoax. Do not defend me. My family doesn't get saved if you defend me. D wake everybody up. Spend your time doing that, and then all of us can be saved from this tyranny. Back in one minute with Mike Adams and your phone calls. I'm Alex Jones. Mike Adams with us for another 20 minutes, and I'm going to get into the economy, a bunch of police state news, and what really happened at the G20. The aftermath of that, if you look at it in hindsight, very precedent-setting on multiple fronts. World government being announced, global tax being announced, attacks on Iran being hyped, end of the dollar being hyped. But right now, let's go back to your phone calls. 
Let's talk to Chris in Maryland and Tanya and others. Chris, you're on the air with Mike Adams. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys got this, but I have a document from the federal government that I called off of Google. It is the International Swine Flu Conference they had a month ago. Yeah, we covered it. We, uh, we originally broke that, and we had reporters... Uh, who were there uh, on the show, like Wayne Madsen. But that that was a, a forced quarantines, how to deal with dead bodies, lockdowns of cities. Mike Adams, you want to comment on that? Uh, no, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, that was a very important piece of breaking news that wasn't supposed to break. That was supposed to be kept, you know, uh, behind the curtain, but it was exposed. But you ever notice now, uh, caller, notice that when you tell people about that, they look at they look at you like you're crazy. They don't believe it's real. Have you experienced that? Oh, man, people, uh, I have my own family calling me a nut job or or one of these people that are getting too into it that I'm going to go nuts. And I'm like, hey, I'm just trying to find out what's going on around me. Exactly. Well, that's we'll because they work. know they should be going nuts about this tyranny, and they know things are out of control. And so they're telling you what they're afraid of about themselves. I I'm sorry, well, go ahead. One last, uh, well... One well, couple things. Uh, they had 15 sessions, and one of them here in the breakout session one, uh, one of their bullets is conducting morgue operations. So they were obviously planning on mass casualties and mass deaths. No, no, they've got quarantines, lockdowns, forced inoculations in there. Mike Adams, you know, your comments on that document. Well, when I read that document, you know what the first thing that came to my mind was is that the ultimate plan for health care reform is to reduce the population by 80%, because then health care becomes affordable. Did I mean, you see the cover of Newsweek where it said the case for killing Granny? No, no, I haven't seen that one. In fact, in fact, guys, pull up the Newsweek cover, the case for killing Granny. I can't find the actual article. The actual... Keep going, Mike. Well, uh, again, if you... If you this country is uh, going broke treating sickness and disease. And at some point... It's not unreasonable to think that somebody at, at high levels would say, you know what, the only way we can afford health care in this country is if we have fewer people to care for. And my goodness, that, that, that whole uh, uh, session that went on there, training for body bags and training for quarantines and training for mass deaths, I mean, that, that was some really concerning stuff. Uh, it, you know, it should get you thinking hard about what's really being planned I future. agree, but, but but I mean, see their psych warfare program, they come out, in the bill is health care rationing, in the bill, the guy that wrote it, Tom Daschle, writes a book saying, yeah, if you're above 60, need eye surgery, you're not going to get it, they do ration it in Europe, uh, but there's no mention of that, then simultaneously they have all these news articles saying there's too many people, we've got to reduce world population, having kids is bad for your carbon footprint, and by the way, we need to kill granny, the case for killing granny, there's the Newsweek headline, oh, online from Newsweek, uh, and then they sit there and say, we're going to kill you, but then it doesn't exist. And then your neighbor, even if you show your neighbor Newsweek, they go, you're insane, that's a fake Newsweek. <laughs> no, I'm well, not kidding. Into, you know, this health care reform debate right now is completely congruent with these kinds of, of evil uh, philosophies. You know, it's, it's absolutely true now that if this health care reform bill gets passed, and if you don't agree to sign up for health care insurance and pay, what is it, $1,900 a year or so for an individual or $13,000 for a family, they will be able to arrest you, imprison you for one year, and the IRS can fine you $25,000. I mean, hold on, this is hold on. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. We have breaking news. I'm going to cover this with you when we come back. It always comes right. out in hindsight. I look at this video, they're definitely cops. Age of Provocateurs documented at G20 during March. Infowars.com exclusive article with the video right now. You can look at them. They're clearly police officers, huge guys. I've seen this over and over again. Uh, they, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's why they attacked Luke. They didn't like it that he was exposing them. Man, these people are evil. We'll be right back. Stay there, Mike.